Hello, and thank you for joining me in this session. So we're going to go through um, about an hour's worth of exercises. And I really just want you to um, take a minute at the beginning. We're going to do some uh, slow movements and just find a way to let our mind and our body settle into the process and start to talk to each other. Um, and I would like you, if you can, to just notice things that are um, changing as you go through the exercises. So particularly in regard to how you're breathing and if you're finding it easier to get your breath through the movement. And over the next day or two, notice as well if some of the things that were aching or that were difficult before the, you did the session, um, if they become a little bit easier as well. Okay, so we're gonna start off. If you could have um, with you, so if you just take a minute, pause this uh, to go and get um, a block or a towel, a rolled up towel. Sometimes if you use like um, a bin bag, a roll of bin bags with a towel around it, that just creates a, an extra bit of firmness. Um, a foam roller or again, a nice big rolled up towel or folded cushion. Um, if you have anything like a band, then that would be great. It doesn't need a lot of resistance. Okay, quite a soft one. Um, and just something like a, a, a large book that you can use as an extra weight if you want to on one or two of the exercises. Okay. Um, and sometimes the big book is handy as well, just to elevate our heels for a couple of things. So we're going to begin um, <clears throat> with some arm floats. So this is very similar to what I would normally do in a Pilates class. So I just want you to to kind of let your heels sink into the ground. Get your breath all the way out. Okay, and we're going up into an arm float, letting them come up, really drop your shoulder blades at the top of that movement, opening your arms out, letting your elbows guide the rest of your arm down. So you can really feel this opening through here. Good. Okay, and I've come into my toes and straightened my knees, so I've come back into my heels with a nice soft knee. So we're just going to do four of these, but we're really taking our time and focusing on where the movement is coming in. So breathing in through your nose. aware of how you're standing on your feet. So let your feet soften into the ground. If you're really feeling the outsides of your feet a lot, just try and soften a little bit into the inside. If you're feeling the outside a lot, just try and kind of really use the pad under your big toe or the ball of the big toe just to um, get a sense of the whole foot. So you're coming onto the outside of the foot slightly and the pad of the big toe, and that just helps you to create an arch. Okay, so here we're having just some arm movement. So I don't want you to come up and bring your shoulders right up. Okay, so you're just letting this movement come almost like a corkscrew from your wrist, your elbow to your shoulders, and all the way back through wrist, elbow, shoulders, stop at that point. You can integrate your breathing if you would like to. Soft knees into your heels, big toe outside of your foot. Good, and let your elbows bend there. Put your hands on your thighs. And just put a little bit of pressure into your thighs there and try and round your shoulders down and draw your lower ribs in. And it will feel like you've kind of rounded your low back a little bit. We just want a little bit of that. And then you're going to exaggerate that. So you're going to take your elbows out to the side to lift your spine up to the ceiling. And then you're going to let your lower ribs and your sternum 
come back through and back up again elbows out giving space for the spine to lift coming back through great and last one Okay, keeping your knees soft, just let the back toe lift as you sway. Let the breath all the way out. Great, and slowing down. Okay. And then again, soften your knees and just let your chin drop. Let your sternum soften as if you're pulling back through your spine. And as you draw your ribs down, you'll start to feel a little bit of tension gathering here as your pelvis is holding, tucking underneath to your pelvis, then coming away from the back of your legs. And just let your knees come in. Let your feet fall in if you need to. And coming back up. We're going to do one more of those. Fantastic. Okay, I'm just going to make sure my volume is up. Great. Okay, so <clears throat> come and lie down on the floor, grab your foam roller. You're going to place your feet on the foam roller, okay, both of them on top. And I've put a little book against the wall here because um, when I move positions, one foot's above the skirting, one's below. So um, that just helps me. Okay, so here we want to be in a 90 degree position, okay? And so your um, knees at 90 degrees and your hips at 90 degrees, brilliant. And what you're going to do is really kind of roll your pelvis this way onto the back of your hips, okay? And then draw your lower ribs in and down, okay? And when you do that, just think about your collarbone still being kind of coming up. So this is being held down, but you're getting an opening still available to you at the top. Okay, you want to press your heels into the wall. I'm going to move my feet a little bit. Okay, heels into the wall. And then you're going to slide that top leg back and squeeze it down. Now, if you find that a little bit difficult, use your block or your rolled towel so that you're Keeping all of this, keeping your heels on the wall, so you really want to feel the back of your, your thighs, your hamstrings as you do this. Okay, heels into the wall, tucked pelvis, connected in your ribs, and you're going to slide as if you're sliding, I don't need the knee, so I'm going to get rid of it, your knee on, along your inner thigh, and then squeezing it down. Recover, breathe in, slide your thigh, squeeze down. Recover, breathe in, slide, squeeze down as you breathe out, connecting in these ribs. Recover, breathing in, slide, breathing out, recover. Now you can make your out breath nice and long. Try and keep your heels in contact with the wall. Good. And last one there. Okay, brilliant. And then we're going to go on to the other side. Um, I'm going to keep facing the camera. <clears throat> so, again, you really want to be against the wall, but just so that we're all in the same place here. So keep your heels against the wall. 
Okay, and this time you're gonna tuck your, tuck your pelvis on top of your legs, connect through your ribs. You're gonna slide the top knee past the bottom knee, okay? And then lift up into your hand. And then if you can, try and lift the bottom knee up to the top knee. Quite hard work. Good. Great job. Keep that, I'll see how I kind of let that come back. You probably can't see because I'm quite dark clothes. I'm really trying to keep that knee pushed past the bottom one and pushing up. And it really makes these muscles through here work as well. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do this wall adductor one more time. So we're gonna do eight reps of this. Okay. So your heels in contact with a wall, 90 degrees at your, let me just straighten up, 90 degrees at your knees and your hips. Tuck your pelvis, drop your ribs, slide your knee up your inner thigh. Don't lose your tuck here. It's quite easy to slide back, but tuck your bum backwards. So make sure you're not doing that. And I'm pressing your heels against the wall and then squeeze that knee into your thigh. And you really feel your adductor here. Keep your feet on the wall. Three more. And keeping your feet in contact with your heels, your heels in contact with the wall really helps you to not lose um, your rounding here. Great, and last one. Fantastic. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, right, so we're just going to come onto our backs. You can move your foam roller and your block over. I'm just gonna tuck the other screen down. There we go. Okay, so coming onto your back and I just want you to stay in this um, position for a minute and just let your body absorb into the ground. Okay, and I want you to really get a sense of your feet just dropping really heavily onto the ground. Just get a feel of what else needs to let go in order for you to do that. Where are you holding on and anticipating movement or preparedness? So one more breath, feeling where that breath wants to go. Can you feel the 360 degrees of your rib cage, back, front and sides? And you might find it a little bit easier to get into your back as if as you breathe in, focus on that 360 movement coming into your back and turn your thumbs out to the sides or your palms up to the ceiling. So you're breathing in. And as you do that, you can do the same thing with your knees a little bit. Your knees come out. 
feel everything relaxing. Breathing out, it comes back and everything lifts. So as you breathe in, your diaphragm and your pelvic floor do this. And as you breathe out, they do this. So if you imagine a wave coming in and out as you do that movement. So as you're breathing in, your thumbs coming out, your knees coming out, and you feel as if you get this opening through your ribs and your pelvis, and everything's allowed to move out. And breathing in, closing back up again. Just doing it one more time in your own pace. It's so easy to hold on to tension and hold on through the pelvic floor and the diaphragm. And then we don't really get the full range of movement available to us. Okay, great. Okay, so now we're just going to do some bridges. So now that your feet have been nice and heavy on the floor, okay, I'm going to get you just to get a sense of your pelvis moving. Breathe out, let the ribs stay down. And I want you to just get a feeling of letting the collarbones come stay up so that you have this movement still available at the top. So even though with the out breath, you're holding this down and as you breathe in, you're trying to access your back, you're letting this come up, okay. And we're gonna tuck the pelvis under. So we're tucking the pelvis this way dragging our feet into the floor and coming up and that should already that's kicking into my hamstrings oh okay go let's work them up hang a bit right coming up now it's really helpful for most people, so let's just see how it is for you to let your um, pelvis do this. So the left side comes slightly back. So I'm doing this. Okay, and I'm staying there. And I just want to hold that for three breaths. Now what you can do is take your block, pop that between your knees, make sure you're still tucked and come back up. And you'll probably find you've got a little bit more movement available to you. And that's because that's changing the position of our, um, our pelvic bones here and letting the sacrum at the back do more movement. So we actually have more range available to us. And we're going to come back to the benefit of this in a minute. Okay. And down. Fantastic. So now we've got a feel of those movements. I want you to move closer to your wall. Okay. So here you're coming onto the wall and I want you to get your pelvis rounded onto the, um, onto the thigh bones. Okay, drag your heels down the wall. So they're not actually moving, they're just like friction. Okay, and you should feel these muscles here, the proximal hamstring really kick on. And if your left one feels a little bit sleepier than the right, make it work. Really focus on that because that left hamstring and this left ab are the key ingredients for making a lot of change in the body, okay? <sighs> Getting that all the way out. I still have this available. Good. Okay, we don't need a lot of movement, but we're gonna come up and down into our bridge. And if you need to shuffle a little bit away from the wall, that's fine. If you have a small stool, then you can use that as well. Keep that sense of friction with the feet on the wall. I've still got my pelvis slightly shifted. And I'm really focusing on these proximal hamstrings. Good. What have I got planned for you next? Okay. So we're really going to start to get the foot hip connection now. Okay. I'm going to get you to um, bring one knee up to 90 degrees. I've shuffled away. I'm going to shuffle back a little bit. 
Okay, so I'm just lifted off, and I'm partly lifted off because the edge of my rug is not in a great position for my back. So I'm just gonna make my legs work a little bit harder on this. Okay, so I'm holding up, and I'm holding my pelvis up in a rounded position. I've accessed my lower ribs here in this connection. Okay, now I'm gonna keep the ball of my big toe, this bit, on the wall, okay? So my right foot, that pad underneath my big toe is gonna to stay on the wall, my toes are relaxed, and I'm just gonna lift my heel up and down. And you can see already my jitteriness. But this is key, I've been working really hard on the, the position of my feet recently. Okay, there, swap legs. So I'm really, really tractioning down on the wall now. I'm really making my pelvis round under to connect into the back of my thigh. So I'm really trying to feel this proximal hamstring working and at the same time keep this connection here. And I find that just slightly shifting my pelvis helps me to stay true to my own alignment. So nice relaxed toes. Heel on and off the wall. Good, and I'm trying not to roll my foot out, okay. I'm keeping my knee in line. And I'm watch out, watching out for what's going on here. So it's really good information for me, getting a sense of what else wants to change just as I do this movement. Okay, good. Right. And we're gonna swap back to um, this one foot here. So, I'm sliding this foot up the wall a little bit until I feel just about that my heel would start to lift. And I'm just gonna take it ever so slightly down. I'm gonna keep my back rounded here. Okay, and again, now I'm gonna really crush a grape underneath that big toe pad. I'm gonna crush a grape and take my knee out to the side and not letting my foot change position Good, and we're just looking for 10 of these. I'm terrible at counting in class. Absolutely dreadful. I have no idea how many I've done. Let's do two more. <laughs> My famous two more. My Pilates class always used to shout at me that I am. Um, They'd have done like 25 and then be like, my two more. <laughs> um, okay, so don't assume that your other foot will go up the same amount. Okay. I get a little bit less range on this leg and you might be the same. So pad of your big toe, pad, crush that grape. Oh, see, like I've got barely any movement when I start on this side. Brushing that grape. There's somebody at my door, which is very annoying. Hold on one second. Bless the delivery drivers, aren't they awesome? Okay. Oh, where was I? Okay, okay, I'm giving you that. So, 
Awesome. Okay, we're actually going to stand up now anyway. So if you have um, a sock handy, that would be great because we're just going to do a small split stance, okay, um, lunge. And I just want you to get a feel of how this is just under the middle of your foot. So you've really got some feedback on that leg, okay. Your back leg, I want you to keep your knee a little bit bent, but really extending into your pelvis. So you don't have to keep neutral here, but I want your hip to be extended, but not your knee. And you're gonna translate your weight forward over that front knee. So your knee is gonna be what's doing. If you find yourself doing this, you're leading with your pelvis, okay? So we really just wanna let the whole body come with and let the knee drive our movement. And if you find that your knee is coming a little bit inside your foot, it's okay. As long as it's not painful and you're not loading it in other ways, you're not on the playing field and about to be tackled, then actually this is a range of movement that your leg needs to have. So we want to let that knee just go with where it needs to go. So the foot will pronate through it, will come through onto the more inside of the um, foot and that's okay. And it will take the knee with it and that's okay too. And actually it's good. Let your toes relax. So just make sure that you're not gripping. Right, so we're just gonna do a couple more and you might be aware of like, I'm finding this really unstable. I can't feel the outside of my foot or my heel wants to lift. Eight to 10 is completely fine, okay? And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So you're just rolling up a little sock underneath the arch of your foot. Okay, back leg, you're fully extended in your hip, but your knee is soft and you're on the toe and you're letting that front knee just travel where it needs to go, taking your body with it. And don't feel you have to control anything else because there's like loads of movement happening all through your body as you do this. Internal rotations, external rotations, counter mutations, mutations at the sacrum, it's okay. Trying not to grip with your toes, it's the main thing, and letting the movement happen at your front knee. Back knee stays slightly bent. You can see that I'm not quite as coordinated with my left leg forward, but I tell you what, I'm a lot better than I was. Okay, right. Now we're gonna do um, a zercher squat. So we've really woken up our feet. We've gotten things moving all the way through the body in lots of different planes of movement, okay? And we're gonna start doing a little bit with actual more loaded movement. Now, if you want to take your big book, okay? And you're gonna let your heels place on that, first of all, okay? So just letting the heels place and then putting the, um, block between your knees um, and you're going to come into a position so that you're again your knees are going to do this movement so if you want to you can if, if you're used to holding weights and you're used to um, more loaded movement then that's fine take another book okay and hold it in front of you and that's enough to start with because what we want to do is gain, get that sense of our hamstrings coming on. So really being into your heels, let your pelvis slightly round under. I'm gonna come side on to you. So you don't wanna be here because a normal squat as we're used to, as we know it typically, this would be a normal squat. It's very, very hingy in your hips, okay? And what we wanna achieve here is a squat that is more, I'm gonna put my block in between, a squat that is more about your knees so then your hips. So you're coming, you're letting the knees come forward. You're letting 
the ankles dorsiflex, yeah? And you're connected here. Okay. So I'm gonna put my other book down. I'm gonna bring this one around. Okay. And see how you feel with and without the book under your heels. You might find it easier to start off with. And arms out is often quite good as well. If you're used to doing weights and you want to load this more, a kettlebell in front of you and a, using a front squat position is a really good way to go, okay? But as we've done 10 of those, that's actually enough at the moment. Okay, I just want to get you to do a similar kind of thing, but in the upper body, okay? So <clears throat> I call this Zercher Bulldog. So the, the squat that we just did with a block is called a Zercher Squat. And this is a Zercher Bulldog, where we're really only thinking about the rib cage. So I'm going to show you side on first and then front ways. So I'm going to get you to bring your hands up so that your elbows are nipple level, okay? And again, just have your pelvis slightly connected into the back of your hamstring. So you don't need to round your back right through, but you, don't, you want to move away from this kind of arched position, okay? So you're just a little bit more tuck. And the key thing, getting your ribs down at the front. Now we're going to try and hold the ribs down. And what we're doing with our arms is letting them come up and challenge this here. So we're lengthening through here. So remember before I was saying that um, the lower ribs and the upper ribs, you should have access to them almost separately. And two thirds of our oxygen is metabolized through the lower lungs, okay? And the lungs operate in kind of three different sections and allow movements and they've got different muscles acting on them. So I really want you to kind of just try and get a sense of um, not just this movement, but actually this movement. And this is a really important thing. So you're really opening up here, okay? Um, and it can be really hard to do. And if you always feel like, oh, I just wanna stretch out and open up, then actually this is a great one for you where it's not about just getting that extension into your back because all that does in the end is continue to compress the back of us. So we want this to be open, but we wanna have access to these different mechanics and, uh, and the availability of the air through the upper lungs as well. Okay, so... I just want you to hang out here for a minute. So your elbows are in, okay? And again, like aim, aim for your nipples with your elbows. Let your breath all the way out. One more breath in. Breathe all the way out. At the end of that, let the elbows come up. So they're horizontal or just above. Breathing all the way out. Breathing in. Breathing out to the sides. Again, don't let that happen. In, out, back to the beginning, breathing out there, have a full breath in and out. Really connect in that lower rib, let the elbows come up a little higher. Try and get your access up here, out. So our arms come back, we're now compressing the back. So it's helping us to push the air out. Coming back to this position, come back, breathe in.
anchoring the ribs, elbows at nipple level, my hands are slightly out to the sides. Great, okay, good work. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna change now to um, hyperpressors. So what I'm gonna be doing when I record this is let you know the stages of um, the exercises. So we've done a warm up, we've done a lot of hips and legs, um, we've done some um, access back into our breathing again, and now we're going to come up and do some what we call hyperpressors, okay? And I'll be doing a separate video to explain this afterwards. So just follow along. So starting off, it's a kind of similar types of position um, as we've been using. But what I want you to do is soften your knees, get this nice slightly tucked under position. So you're connecting the bottom of your pelvis into the top of your thighs. You don't have to lose the arch in your back. So you don't have to like completely round here. But what we don't want is you standing there, okay? And we want this to be slightly active. And then we're gonna come into the balls of our feet. So that actually what that does is activate those hamstrings more. So our knees are soft, toes are relaxed, okay? Pelvis is under. Finding your breath. Okay, and we're going to do that corkscrew with our hands. So our hands coming out to the sides of us, soft elbows, like you're going to go in for a cuddle. Okay, corkscrew through your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder, and then bend your arm, your elbows. So it feels like you're pushing the floor down, pushing your elbows out, that little bit of kind of um, what we might call this is like a co-contraction all the way through the legs. So we've got that little bit of tuck through the, the hips, soft knees, slightly up into our ankles. Okay, and I want you to do two breaths here. So you've done a lot of breathing already. And you're trying to get it here into your rib cage. All the way out, really let it connect down and through. Pushing the floor away, elbows out to your sides. Okay, now you're gonna try and expand your rib cage here without taking a breath. Without taking a breath, Monica. <clears throat> then you breathe in and breathe all the way out. So going through it again, two breaths. And your rib cage without breathing. Breathe. <sighs> Way out. Bring your hands up in front of you like you're pushing into a wall. Elbows still out, soft knees, pelvis tucked down onto the back of your thighs, lifted into your heels ever so slightly. And again, two breaths. So as you breathe out, imagine your pelvic floor lifting. As you breathe in, imagine it relaxing down. Expand without breathing. Out. 
come up to the top. So you, if it's above your head is too much or uncomfortable in your shoulders, just kind of have it at an angle. So your arms are turned in. Expand. Come down, pushing your hands onto your thighs. Your heels are down, but you're a little bit more in the balls of your feet. Okay, you've lifted your lower ribs up here so you're not kind of really arched and extended through your back. Connect those ribs down. Long, slow breath. Really try and get that breath out, lifting through the pelvic floor. Imagine that 360 breath as you breathe in. Okay, expand without breathing. All the way out. Brilliant. Relaxing. Just take a few breaths for a minute. And you should feel actually that you've got more of your whole lungs and rib cage available to you there. You feel probably more connected in your pelvic floor. You got better contact of your heels into the ground. Okay, fantastic. So coming back onto the floor, we're gonna put this into a little bit more action. So point your um, heels against the wall okay and what you're going to do is like round your pelvis under connect those lower ribs visualize have access to these clavicles coming up okay you're going to really press your heels into the wall as you lift your knees off the ground you're going to stay here for seven breaths Keep the clavicles lifted. And down with your knees. Okay, we're gonna take it up a peg. If you prefer to, just stick with that same level. But if you're happy, get your foam roller Okay, and pop it between um, your calves and your thigh. Let me just string you back a little bit so you can see me. Right, really get that squeeze going on. Tuck your pelvis, connect into your low ribs, access those clavicles. Okay, and you're gonna really tuck your pelvis down onto the back of your thighs, really squeeze the foam roller. Now the ways that we progress this eventually is that we use um, sliders out, but we can also do things like uh, tricep push-ups. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're not bringing the arch into your back. You can just hang out here and breathe as well. It's fine. And this should be really burning. You should really be feeling the challenge of keeping that connection of your pelvis down onto your femurs and the squeeze of the foam roller, the connection of your lower ribs and the lifting of your clavicles. Great, okay. And let that come away. And now we're just gonna go into a very relaxed kind of breathing position but I want you to be a little bit of elevated in your knees to come down onto the floor so I've come up on my block oh, let's take it back 
this for you. I'm on a shot. Okay, here we go. Watch my knees. Palms facing the ceiling with your elbows bent. Okay, your hips are above your knees. Try and just let your feet relax and line as well. You can bring your elbows into the books a little bit more. And you're really trying to again get this tuck down and the ribs lifted. And the main thing we want here is breathing into your back. Connect your low ribs as you breathe out. One more breath. Okay, fantastic. Okay, you just get a sense of your body kneeling there. Go back into a standing before we do a little bit for our backs and our arms and we're going to do a last kind of blast before we finish okay so um <clears throat> you all right okay so Excuse me for one moment. I just have a little bit of traffic in the room. There we go. Okay. So your heel against the wall, okay? You don't need to be in a big split squat here, okay? That's definitely not the aim, but you want your heel really pressing into the wall, your back knee soft, okay? And your pelvis is really gonna round down onto here. Now, really important of this position, Get those low ribs down as you breathe out. Keep this lifted. Because it's really easy just to round everything and completely lose um, part of what you're trying to achieve. So arms forward to open up the back, okay? Keep the knee, back knee soft. Connecting in that lower breath, that lower ribs. Give me one minute. See how it feels for you to keep all of that and just slide with that front leg. And if you found that sock helpful before, then you can do this exercise with the sock. Okay, really letting your foot move. So not gripping in the ankle, not gripping in the toes. Okay, and then swap legs. Go ahead. Okay. So crushing the grape with a big toe pad, not too hard, but you want some connection there. Really the main thing is the connection of the heel into the wall, your pelvis onto the back of the femur, that back knee bent a little bit, Heel, heel, heel into the wall. <sighs> Low ribs down, access to your clavicles. Okay. It's a really nice way to kind of just train the alignment of your movement and get a sense of what your body will and won't do. 
Now my breathing hasn't been brilliant all the way through this because I'm chatting away. But hopefully you guys at home have been able to really access into that part of this. <sighs> so it'd be really helpful for me as well if you guys give me some feedback on um, my camera position, if it's been helpful. It looks like, I think next time I'll make sure I'm not in such dark clothes because I think that will make a difference. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Right. And you can always pause and do an extra couple of sets of something if you find that helpful. Okay. Right. Okay. So I've got, I'm hanging onto my door frame here and you can use a band. You can even use a pair of tights for this. Okay. So I'm just using the, the door handle. I'm letting my knees bend. Okay. I'm in a fairly neutral pelvis, but I really want those ribs to come up. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing is coming. Oh, hang on. My knees like that. It's too strong for me. Um, I'm coming back with my arms and then my triceps. Okay. So breathing out, breathing in. When you're back, if you want to breathe in, it really helps you to get this lifting through here. Okay. Breathing out as you come forward. Good, keep connection with those low ribs. And if you want to, you can do the same thing as when you did the zercher. If you find it aching in your back and you don't quite have that, um, that hinge available, you can squeeze the block Okay, and let this little bit of rounding happen and then really connect in your pelvis there. You can even put the book back under your heels so that you're more kind of almost in a skiing position really. So that you're elevated a little bit more there. Sorry, I'm not concentrating, don't follow my breathing. take that off my door handle and we're going to do some triceps I'm going to face this way I think <clears throat> so I'm using my right arm and the band is under my left foot okay so I've got a reasonable grip for that again I'm coming forward and this is a hinge so you can kind of um yeah just come down but just try and be uh neutral in your back Okay, and let your ribs come back up. I don't quite got my tensions right on here. There we go. And this is quite a nice little extra resistance on that posterior glute as well. And you're really just bending from your elbow. And if you want to, you can give it an extra kick up when the arm is straight. So a straight kick, straighten, kick. Okay, swap sides. Try and make sure that your right knee doesn't come inwards on this, not because it's bad for your knee, but just because it really helps you to get more access into that outside glue if you just keep um, that little bit of other rotation. Hmm. 
Okay. <clears throat> so we are going just to do a 777 to finish. So um, 777 on zurchers and 777 on pull downs. And that means we're going to get our book and our block. Okay. You can grab a weight if you want. I'm going to leave it just now. I had a funny little tweak in my low back just then. <clears throat> okay, so holding your weight or your book or nothing at all. Block between your knees. If you're aware of your pelvis onto the back of your rib cage. <sighs> Breathing out, connecting your ribs. And <sighs> just to halfway. And up. Three. So we do seven at the top of the movement, seven at the bottom half of the movement, and seven all the way through the movement. And Two more. It's my famous two more. Awesome. Okay. And band pull downs. So at this position here, you want your I'm gonna kneel so that my other video can see me. Um, you want your shoulder blades coming together and your elbows forward, okay? Coming back up. Try to keep your hands facing forward so you're not just rotating out from your elbow. Oh! You're controlling your shoulder blades as you come back up. I haven't done 777, I'm talking you through it too much. Okay, so that's three to get you into the movement. Right, seven, the top half. It's to your ears. Okay, bottom half. It's the hard bit. And if you don't have this in your shoulder, don't do it. You might find it easier um, actually just sticking with that first bit. So if you don't have this bottom movement, because it's quite a lot through here, don't do it. Okay, and seven all the way through. Control, 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 control. Control for the last one, control, control. Brilliant, well done. Okay, stay with me just to lie down on your back. Let your legs be straight. You can't see my head, but that really doesn't matter. And just let your body imprint the mat. And we're just gonna take one minute at the end here.
arms come above your head, feeling long and connected in your body. Freedom in your joints, lovely warmth in all of your muscles. Expansion in your breath. And hopefully a clearer and a little bit more peaceful state of mind. <coughs> I'd love to know how you got on with the session. Please do drop me a message on any of the platforms, really, on email, on text if you've got my mobile number, um, on Instagram. Let me know what you thought, um, what you really liked, what you struggled with, what would work better for you. Um, any of the problems that you felt through the session or before the session and maybe even you feel less afterwards, let me know, okay? And have a great rest of the week.